Today's video, we're going to talk about one of the biggest issues with this integration. And I kind of expected it would happen, but I did not think it would be to this extreme. Every time there's any kind of update like this, obviously this is probably the biggest update in Call of Duty history, combining all this content into a second year product, which is Warzone. I think only Zombies Chronicles is something on that level, but that's completely different. In this particular case, I want to kind of look at the stats and see how they compared from Cold War, Black Ops Cold War, and transitioned into Warzone. Ideally, I thought, hey, you know what? Maybe they'd buff the bullet velocity, make some of these weapons viable. Maybe they'd swap some of the attachments so it would make sense to compete with the monolithic suppressor. But they didn't do that at all. They went a completely different route than I expected. We're going to talk about exactly what they've done in today's video. If you enjoy the video, learn something new, please do me a favor, hit the like button. And if you're brand new, want to find your way back for more Call of Duty content, just make sure you subscribe with notifications on. YouTube's telling me about 67% of you haven't hit the subscribe button, even though you continue to watch. So that's always something good to double check if you want to make sure you are subscribed so you'll be able to find your way back to the channel. One thing that's expected of my channel and a lot of other channels out there like Drifter, Exclusive Ace, true gun data all these types of channels is to get the information and the data biggest problem with the game right now is they basically changed all of the stats that we have from cold war so literally whatever that little chart is in cold war that says damage bullet velocity range all that stuff reload speed ads time pretty much everything i obviously haven't had a chance to test every weapon and every attachment but i thought it was worth taking a look at and talking about how drastically different they are and then give some basic recommendations because obviously the only way we're going to find out the meta is through trial and error and those things find themselves out pretty quick whatever you see people using the tournaments they've kind of honed in on a select few weapons obviously when it comes to the data of the weapons it's almost impossible to test because we do not have a private match system which allows me to join a custom match with one player no i have to have 50 people join the private match. So that's not going to be possible. Uh, but there's several things I was able to test. And I'm going to go ahead and show those off in today's video. Uh, one thing I will point out is a couple different things. One is you are able to use an AK with an AK. You are able to use an MP5 with an MP5. Um, the attachments have been modified slightly because we don't have a 45 round mag. In Cold War, we have a 40 round mag. But the biggest problem still with this is they did not modify bullet velocities as I can tell. And as we go ahead and check out some gameplay, you're going to see exactly what I'm talking about, about the stuff that needs to change. It almost feels as though Cold War basically said, here's the weapon models. You guys figure everything else out. That That's definitely what it feels like. That there's no collaboration when it comes to these weapon stats. So let's go ahead and check it out right here. Obviously, I have stats. Time to kill. Don't worry about all these numbers. We got all this type of stuff where basically I have every weapon and I keep track of everything. and have multiple tabs that I can look at in reference data. Um, I started to do this this time around where I actually have the patch notes. So if they update something, I can say buff. I know it's small. You're not really supposed to look at all this. That's not the point. The point of this is to actually show you once we get into over here. So the different things I wanted to test were damaged. Obviously, that's the most important thing. I was able to go into that trial mode that they offer. Um, and I set up my loadout before I went to this. And you can see when you get the loadout, you get the cash, you buy the loadout. It's going to have the stoner and the RPD. And then pretty much in game, it shows how much damage you have. And when you shoot the player, the damage values do not add up. To what they are in cold war pretty much when we look at these and we go through we'll go ahead and see it i'm going to go ahead and show the process of what i was doing trying to shoot specifically certain areas i see i did it real quick there we'll go through we'll skim ahead so that was for body shots so i aim for the head i make sure i get the hit marker i look at the data and i continue to go back and forth like that swap weapon focus on getting a headshot get a headshot back off and look at the damage values again when we do this, the damage values do not make sense. When we look at the stoner and the RPD, it's supposed to do 42 base, 58 to the head. Even at further ranges, if we went all the way down here, it's 32 and 44. Um, and then if we go over here, we can see that the RPD is 38, 53, 34, 47. So when we go back over here to Cold War stats, we can see these numbers. 51, 48, 32. So the numbers are, are different. That's proof there. Proof one. Let's continue. So now we go to the next thing. We're going to test bullet velocity. So when we do bullet velocity, what you do is you aim at a target. You know the distance is away. So you can see I ping the target and I fire with the Krig. This is a fully kitted so I can get the right uh, variables here. Um, and this one looks to line up. 
when I do the, the, the bullet distance, all that stuff, it ends up being around 1,050 meters per second, which makes perfect sense when you stack with these attachments. Uh, I believe the number in game is like 1068 or something like that when you're in Cold War. So that's pretty close. That works out pretty good. When you do the M4 with this specific setup, it should be around 500. Um, and it does. Look at it. Look at how slow this bullet is. We'll, we'll look at the tracer right here. You can see how slow it travels. Boom. Do it again. Boom. Boom. You can see how far that bullet takes to travel. So bullet velocity looking like the only thing that I thought they should change was not changed. Unfortunate. Um, then we can go over here. Let's look at recoil patterns. You know what? You know what? Maybe, maybe for some consistency, let's look at the same recoil patterns. I'm 14 meters away from this wall and I'm using the Krig 6. Let's go ahead and fire that. Switch weapons to the AK-47, and we'll see the recoil pattern. So you can see it goes up, and then it bounces over, has a little bit of a gap, and it continues on. And these are the same recoil patterns if I did it over and over. I'm not gonna show footage forever. So it goes up a little bit and a little bit to the side. That's it, pretty straightforward, good recoil patterns, right? Pretty consistent, they go up and then diagonal. Now let's go ahead and look at the next set of recoil patterns. Boom, all right. I marked the wall, 13, 14 meters, we good, right? Shoot the Krig, let's check out how this recoil pattern goes. Literally nothing like what we just saw. And then let's go ahead and look at the AK-47. This is the version that is from Cold War. And look at these recoil patterns. Not even close, not even close. No attachment, straightforward, shooting a wall, perpendicular at 14 meters, and we're getting completely different results. It's almost as if they added 30 new guns, not 30 Cold War guns, because they're not the same. Let's go ahead and keep going. There's more. ADS speed. You start the ADS speed right here. And what happens is as soon as, by the watch, right here, it'll say mount. Boom, right? And then you do that as soon as it's fully ADS. And I've already marked it, 267. Um, and it ends up being a little bit faster than they are in Cold War, because they're pretty much all around 300. Uh, except for, for one of the SMGs. I think it's the QBZ is like 287 or something like that. It's like one frame difference. Same thing with this one. If we go ahead and do that. We're going to get one frame. We come through. We go here. And it ends up being 284. So it is a little bit faster. One of the last things I'll cover is somebody mentioned me on Twitter. They said, hey, you can't drop shot with the new guns. You 100% can. So right here, this is a normal AK-47 from Modern Warfare. You can definitely drop shot. Uh, when you go ahead and use the Cold War version, you can see that you can also drop shot. You stay ADS. You don't put your hand down to do it with some weird movement. These do not match the Cold War stats at all. And I've proven a couple different points here. And what this means is it's incredibly difficult to test what the weapons are doing. Damage, ranges, all that type of stuff. Because when I was shooting those little AI creatures, I can't make them stand still. It's not like I can join that little thing and have them shoot, look at the damage, have them shoot, look at, the, it doesn't work that way. And it's almost too impractical and impossible to test with any type of certainty or consistency. I know Drifter was talking about reload speeds are different um, and, uh, and other, other mechanics. And we're kind of like talking like, yeah, something is way off. It's almost like they didn't take anything from Cold War except for the, the weapon models. Cause they look like it just obviously in their, in their engine but then when you actually go and use the weapons they literally do not feel anything like each other obviously some standouts so far are going to be the m16 just because that's a burst weapon and uh, from the footage i've seen so far it's disgusting but generally with those burst weapons the bullet velocity is not that great so they're going to only be good up until some point where they're godly and then all of a sudden they kind of fall off because it's kind of hard air hit shots at the range like we saw the bullet with the XM4 basically just dove into the dirt with like 450, 500 meters per second. So you're looking normally for about 900 meters per second. At least the bullet velocity is looking like they're matching based off the individual attachments. So one, one stat you can trust, but basically all the other ones, it's gonna take a long time before we find out what is top tier, what is top dog, other than people just experimenting and playing with it and going based off the feels. So hopefully this helped you out a little bit. I know it is a lot to talk about, very confusing. Um, that they've gone this route. It's very disappointing in my opinion. If you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you want to find your way back, more Call of Duty content, make sure you are subscribed with notifications on. Appreciate all the support on the channel. Thank you for watching as always. Have a great day.